garlic and crushed red pepper. Now, some of you may not like too much, so we'll start with just a little bit, maybe a teaspoon. Okay. Let this cook. All those flavors will season the oil. And then we add our tomatoes. Let that cook down a few minutes and we will add the green beans. And then we cook the whole dish all together for about 10 minutes or so. Serve it over a nice long pasta. Today I'm using linguine. Now that the onion is cooked down, gotten a little bit brown, it'll give our sauce a nice flavor. What we're gonna do is take our tomatoes. These are San Marzano tomatoes. You can use any good quality canned tomato. And I'm gonna just crush them a little with my hands. Make sure you crush them in the liquid so they don't squirt all over the house. Okay, so now that that's done, I can put this into my pan. I've turned the heat down to low so that I don't get a lot of splattering when I pour this into the very, very hot pan because there is some oil in there, so the oil and the liquid from the tomatoes might create a lot of splatter. Okay, so let's pour those into the pan. Mix this well, and then we'll add our long beans. Cook it about 10 minutes. While this sauce is cooking for that 10 minutes, what we can do is cook our pasta. Okay. Bring this back up to a high heat. Add the beans. These beans were boiled so that they were nice and tender. Val tells me they don't steam well, so he recommends that we boil them. Okay. This is also a great side dish. In fact, this is a traditional Southern Italian side dish, just green beans and tomato sauce. I'm gonna take a step over here to my pasta pot. We wanna make sure that our water is at a rolling boil. You wanna use a nice big pot when you cook pasta because the pasta needs plenty of room to dance around in the water. When the water comes to a boil, add about a tablespoon of salt. And then we'll add our pasta. When I use long pasta like spaghetti, I sometimes break it in half so that there's more room in the pot for the spaghetti. And you don't wanna overcook your pasta. Pasta should be al dente, which means to the tooth. It should give a little when you bite into it. So this will take about five or six minutes. I'm also going to make sure that before I drain that, I save a little bit of the pasta cooking water. Okay. So now we just have to wait a few minutes. While that's happening, we could grate our cheese, we could set the table, and everything will come together just fine. Well, our pasta's done cooking, so I've drained it, and I just have it sitting here in the colander. We don't add any oil to the pasta. And what I'm gonna do is just get my sauce back up to a boil, add a little bit of the pasta cooking water, the starch in the water will bring the sauce together and make it just a little bit tighter, which is great. Okay, so pasta goes into the bowl. Nice big bowl. Pasta is cooked al dente. Val would be happy. He tells me I cook my pasta too long. And then we'll just spoon some of this delicious sauce over top. And it looks and smells really good. I love to also add a little extra crushed red pepper to this at the end, but that's really a personal choice. We have our long bean sauce, long bean and tomato sauce with crushed red pepper. There we go. Okay, let's grate some cheese right over the top. Pecorino Romano complements this very well. Again, we like to grate the cheese fresh just before we use it. We get maximum flavor that way. Okay, and top it with that. Okay, and there we go. Long bean pasta, Val's long bean pasta. We have a couple of other things left to do, which is to finish up our eggplant parmesan. All right, let's check our oven and see how the eggplant's doing. Two quick things left to do here. Top it with a little bit of sauce. And a piece of basil and some cheese. And it goes back into the oven just long enough to warm it up again and melt that cheese. This is really a stress-free eggplant parmesan. Some cheese. This is a mixed grated Italian cheese. What I generally do when I have a lot of leftover little pieces of cheese, good quality cheese, I throw it into my food processor with the shredding blade, 
and make a nice mixture of shredded Italian cheese. And I keep it in my freezer, and then I always have cheese for topping. Makes a great Italian macaroni and cheese. Okay, a little bit of basil. Tomatoes and basil are such a great complement. You almost can't have one without the other. If the basil leaves are really big, you can tear them. These are kind of medium, so they don't need to be torn up too much. Okay, one more, back into the oven. And we have one thing left to do, which is to finish our fruit tart. So let's get these in the oven. Our tart is nice and golden brown. I want that bottom to fall off, so I'll just put it on something nice and tall. Let that continue to cool while I get my peaches ready. So we're going to cut one of the peaches, do the free stone, just twist it off, and cut it into nice, thin slices. And I like the peaches without the skin. You can leave the skin on if you want. I happen to prefer, I, there's something I don't like about fuzzy peach skin. Nectarines would work. This tart works great with berries as well. In fact, you could do mixed berries. If the berries looked better today, I would have bought some berries, but I actually thought the peaches looked a lot better than the berries. Okay, so really quick with your peaches. And then what we're going to do is step aside and make our cream filling. Now make them nice and thin, okay? And this is sort of a guilt-free dessert because we have oatmeal in here and honey. Honey is a great substitute for sugar because it's absorbed more slowly into your bloodstream and it's more acceptable for people with diabetes. Okay, so the peaches are ready. Let's make the filling. I have some cream cheese in my bowl, about eight ounces of cream cheese. I'm gonna put it in my food processor. I also brought it to room temperature to make it a little bit more flexible. So whip it up in your food processor. And then what we're gonna do is add just a little bit of your favorite liqueur. One that I'm really fond of right now is a blood orange liqueur. So I'm gonna add just about a tablespoon of blood orange liqueur to this. It'll give our sauce a nice flavor. You need a spatula to wipe that down. Scrape down the sides of the bowl, make sure it's all getting mixed in very well. And once that's done, what we're going to do is go back over here to our tart crust. And we'll spread this on the tart crust. Top it with the peaches and dessert will be ready. Now what will make this a little easier would be an offset spatula. Okay, spread that with your offset spatula. All righty, it doesn't have to be perfect. I like things a little bit rustic. They look a lot more homemade that way. Okay, top it with the peaches. Don't worry about being really fussy with the peaches. Just mound them on there, spread them around. You could do a perfect little pinwheel design, but then you'd only have one layer of peaches. This way we have a lot more peaches. Okay, so dessert is ready. Let's go check that eggplant parmesan. Okay, eggplant parm looks perfect. This took about three or four minutes to get this nice golden brown on the cheese. These can be picked up easily with a spatula and you have an individual serving. Right now I feel like there's a trend towards individual servings, which are really nice. And sometimes they're more time consuming, but in this case, this individual serving took no time at all. So today we made our peaches and cream tart with our blood orange liqueur cream and oatmeal and almond crust, our oven fried eggplant Parmesan and we had our long bean pasta. 
I'm Barbara Selig Brown. I hope you'll enjoy making these dishes at home. Please visit my website, stressfreecooking.com, and I hope you'll join me again soon. Stress-Free Cooking is brought to you by From the sunny Mediterranean comes one of the world's finest olive oils for all your cooking needs. Pompeian Extra Virgin Olive Oil, Classic Mediterranean, and Extra Light Tasting. Pompeian makes everything better. From our table to yours, Opeachy Wines. Fine wines and spirits from around the world since 1913. Cutco, the world's finest cutlery. Melissa's, the freshest ideas in produce. And Sub Zero Wolf Appliances. Enjoy Barbara Selig Brown's cookbook as she shows you how to make stress-free dishes in the comfort of your own home. Offer made by Stress-Free Cooking for $19.95.